After saving the world not just once, but twice, our favorite Hargreave siblings deserve their break. So as we anticipate what the third season would bring, it'd be fun to discover some offset incidents we wouldn't like to miss. Here are 10 Umbrella Academy behind the scenes that you need to know. Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. Number 10. Vocalist Gerard Way wrote Umbrella Academy. This may not come as a surprise for my Chemical Romance fans, but believe it or not, lead vocalist Gerard Way was the author of the comic series that inspired the show. It was in 2007 when the musician started seriously working on the mini-comics first volume, Apocalypse Suite. At that time, Way told Rolling Stones that the band was under the throes of extreme pressure from success and popularity. Following the first issue's success, Way released the second installment, Dallas, in 2008, and the third and last one, Hotel Oblivion, came in 10 years after. On how he wrote the series, Way started doing the character's illustrations first. Then by taking inspiration from his members and himself, he added each of their personalities, super abilities, and their own pain. The unique miniseries caught the eye of Steve Blackman, who's responsible for the series we all love and enjoy today. Since Apocalypse Suite, Way has co-written many other notable series, such as Doom Patrol for DC and Penny Parker's character in Spider-Verse for Marvel. Number 9. I Will Kill for This Role Number 5 was such a fan favorite in the comic series that showrunner Steve Blackman was dead set on finding the best actor who could portray him. Of course, accurately playing as a 13-year-old kid with the mind of a 58-year-old grown man is no easy feat. After reviewing 320 auditions, he finally found Aiden Gallagher. Blackman told Vulture, the kid looked at the camera and goes, I will kill for this role. He was immediately sold. The young actor said he read the comics numerous times and memorized how Five was drawn to really get the correct facial cues and body gestures. His stellar performance left a huge impression on fans, and Number Five's popularity skyrocketed after the show's release. It's still mind-blowing that the cute, quirky, and often confused Nikki Harper from the 2014 Nickelodeon show is now one badass time-traveling assassin. One similarity, though, is both love their family. Number 8. The Most Mysterious Character One of the biggest mysteries in the entire show is Ben Hargreaves' backstory, especially how he died. Fans had their own theories about it, but even Justin Mill, the actor who played Ben, had very little to go on. The show made sure that Ben's character remains a mystery, so much so that the actor was sworn to secrecy and was given very few clues himself. He also had to hide from his family that he'd already gotten the role until the show's first season premiere. What's more, the big twist in the end of season two shocked not just the fans, but also Mill. The actor revealed he just received the last remaining pages of the script from the director right when he was getting ready to leave the set. Nonetheless, it got us all hyped for season three. Fingers crossed that we finally get Ben's full backstory, or at least a bit of it. Number seven, Ellen Page was inspired to learn violin. Whether it's trying new recipes, learning a new instrument, or starting a new sport, we've all been inspired to try or learn something new because of something we saw either on the TV or the internet. That was the same case for Ellen Page, who played as Vanya in the series. If we could remember, the first episode of season one opened with a beautiful violin piece being played in the background. Bearing deep connections with her childhood and subsequent character development, the violin has been Vanya's trademark throughout the series. It was actually Canadian violinist Imogen Gloss and Ellen's stunt double who was playing those wonderful violin pieces. Nonetheless, it had inspired Paige to try learning the instrument as well. So far, the actor said she was able to decently play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with the help of her teacher, who she says was very patient with her. We're looking forward to seeing Ellen play the violin herself in the series' coming seasons. Number 6. Minor Differences Between the Comics and the Series The real challenge in creating books or comic-based films and shows is determining what extent they should follow the original work. Do it right and you'd be spared from the who did it better film versus book slash comic debate. If you haven't read the miniseries and you're curious, rest assured the series didn't deviate far from the comics. It did a good job at using it as the main guideline. But there are some crazy character differences from the comic books. For one, Diego's ability was not just limited to curving knives and bullets, but also holding his breath underwater for a long time. But executive producer Blackman later explained that that was a conscious choice because they wanted a character who was a little bit nearer to reality. 
Five and Luther are actually twins, since they were birthed from the same mother in 1989. In the second installment of the series, Dallas Claus actually has a daughter, and one that's surely interesting is that Diego and Vanya develop some romantic courtships too. But since the show's still ongoing, we're not sure if it would be addressing these details in future episodes. Number 5. The Weather Brought Problems on Set For those who don't know, most of the show was shot in Canada, mostly Toronto. Only a few scenes including JFK's assassination were filmed in a different location. Canada's climate is largely known for its freezing winters. Unfortunately, this caused a lot of readjustments and some injuries during filming. If we remember the scene of Hargreaves' funeral, the rain did well in giving off a somber mood, but it was actually minus 10 degrees Celsius when they were filming it. In season 2, the snow also became an issue. At the beginning of filming, the weather was fairly warm, but it drastically shifted towards the end. Most notably in the final battle scene, a snowstorm had hit and the crew had to adjust. Since they couldn't edit out the snow, the show writers opted to use it as a byproduct of Harlan's unstable power. The VFX team had to digitally cover up a lot of snow footprints post-production, since scenes are shot multiple times. Actors Emmy and Tom also had some minor incidents while filming due to the snow. Thankfully, they were both okay, and the whole team still pulled it off. Number 4. Luther's Body Everyone at some point in their life had felt insecure towards the way they look. It's part and partial of being human. Though some struggle with it more than most, that's how Luther felt in the series, and a sediment that Gerard Way relates with so much. Though it was less portrayed in the comics, Way posted in Instagram that body horror was the original intention during the series, as it was something most people go through. Additionally, Tom Harper, the actor who plays Luther, tried his best to bulk up for the look, but the producers eventually decided it'd be better to make him wear a muscle suit to really copy what the character looked like in the comics. Unlike what they did with Pogo, the team also decided not to use any VFX on him to make it more authentic. Number 3. Ben Claw's Possession Getting possessed is a frightening nightmare, especially since you're unable to control your own body. You don't know what it will do to you or the people around you. But if it's Ben possessing Claws, then we're all for it. In Season 1, we know that Claws is the only one to see Ben, and the two have been relatively close. But in Season 2, it is later revealed that Claws can be possessed by the spirits if he allows them to. So he gives Ben the chance. To prepare for those scenes, Robert Sheehan, actor who played Claws, followed Justin Min, Ben, around the set whenever he had free time to try to copy his mannerisms and the way he talks. He even asked for some visual recordings from Justin, too so he could perfect it. After numerous practices, the end product was pretty conceiving, but Justin did find it annoying at some point. Number 2. Hidden Hints Throughout the Second Season Some dedicated fans would re-watch scenes and really make an effort to look for little Easter eggs, like symbolisms, clues, or hidden meanings. But for those who aren't observant or simply don't have the patience for it, it's a good thing we can point it out here. For the show's second season, one reoccurring symbol stood out so much so that fans started looking for it in the episodes. We're referring to the sparrows littered throughout the series. After watching the second season, we of course understand what the sparrow already means and how it was already a premonition. But what's more interesting is if you count the number of sparrows that shows up in the episodes, it adds up to exactly 43. We know that 43 symbolizes the number of children that have powers that were all born on October 1st, 1989. It was later confirmed that we might be able to see some of the other children in the coming seasons. That's definitely something to look forward to. Number 1. Dance With Me Though they're a bit dysfunctional, which is understandably so, the adopted siblings are at the end of the day a family loyal to one another, and it always warms our heart when we see some occasional touching moments throughout the series. One of the most notable in the first season was Allison and Luther dancing together. The graceful dance was actually choreographed by Ellen Page's wife, Emma Portner, who did a great job at conveying the emotional weight between the two. We see another soft moment, but this time in Season 2, featuring Claus, Allison, and Vanya. The trio bonded and danced at a salon. According to the actors, there was really choreography prepared for that scene, and they even shot three hours worth of footage for it. However, the team decided to completely scrap it out and requested the actors to just dance freely. It was a better fit for the mood and vibe they were going for. So what do you think? Do you find these off-the-set trivia interesting? Did we miss some notable behind the scenes? If yes, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The notification bell won't ring itself, and I'll see you next time on the channel. 
Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple.